So welcome to I Am Woman, everyone. We've got a really super special speaker and presenter this evening, Yvonne Hayes, and I call her a time management vision, values, a time management, goal management, whatever you call it, management guru. She is, well, she's more like a ninja than a guru. <laughs> she actually gets stuff done. She doesn't uh, just talk about stuff. She actually gets stuff done. And Yvonne is going to show you and extend, because last week we were talking about getting your why right. And this is all about, okay, you've got your why, but this is about how you put that all into action because unless you put the how in place it's just a dream so we're going to be focusing on the how and the what and Yvonne is an ideally placed lady who's going to show us how to do that so Yvonne thank you so much for dedicating your time to upskilling us all in this area and uh, can't wait so over to you Yvonne. Can you make me house so I can share my slides? I'm, I'm sitting in my hotel room at the moment and I, because I'm so short, my feet don't, I'm on a swivelly chair, my feet don't touch the ground. So I keep having to put them up against the wall to stop me doing this. <laughs> <sighs> so hopefully we'll be all right and I won't disappear. Let's find these slides. I want to open now. Is it on the top there? Yeah, let's have a little look. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, can everybody see those? Everybody see them? Yeah, yeah. we're good to go then. Right, so we're going to have a little think about how we can turn our why into gold, really. Because it's all very well having this why. And this is one thing that I had to why for a long time. And I thought it was a, a goal, but it was actually just a dream. Because unless you commit these dreams to paper and you write them down and you plan how you're going to get there, they will just stay as dreams. And dreams are really not worth the paper they're written on, um, to be honest. You need to have a proper focus and a strategy really so Cheryl introduced us last week to this uh, the golden circle and she we very much concentrated on the why but I thought we'd move out a bit to this week and have a look at how and what you can do to reach those so just to recap the why um, I know we were told last week to listen to ourselves because you already know what your why is and I think sometimes we miss the why because we're not listening to ourselves. We listen to what other people tell us we should be doing. And so we need to ditch that. Um, there are no uh, rights and wrongs, but I think, you know, your why is it, as Miriam said, is in here. It's what you're passionate about. It's what lights up, you know, your eyes when you talk about it, isn't it? Um, Focus on yourself, respect your story. Your story will lead you to your why. And we need to just believe in and empower ourselves because we can do that. And sometimes we do need to dig back about what inspired your business idea. Why are we doing what we're doing? Because we're all doing things that are very different. But think about what's unique about your business as well, because that helps you with the what and how you're going to progress. You know, what issues are you trying to address? What problems are you trying to solve what is your purpose for being so i think we pretty much got that last week um but this vision it's not just a dream it's about planning it um and this is where i come in i love a bit of a plan i love a bit of a list i've always got a notebook somewhere i've always got pens everywhere i go even in my tiny little mini one i have a two color highlighter that you've got to have stuff with you but you've got to know where you are to start with and then you've got to know where you're going and i've put the three men and a genie i heard this story last week from um, a businessman um, in Malaysia and he just made me really think about goals and the story is you had three men who set sail on a boat 
they were going to explore the world. However, uh, a storm came up, the boat capsized, and the men found themselves drifting in the sea till one of them spotted an island. So they managed to swim and paddle their way to this island. When they got on the island and they were looking around for various things that they could use, perhaps to signal or to, to, for shelter, one of them came across a lamp. Now we all know in all nice little lamps that you can rub a genius in it. So they gave it a go and they thought this could be it. We're stuck on this island, it looks a bit barren. These three wishes are gonna be great. There's three of us, three wishes sorted. So they had a little bit of time and they thought about it. What if you could have one wish, would you wish for? So Alfie went first and Alfie rubbed the lamp and whoosh, out came the genie. And the genie said, what do you want master? Whatever you wish, I will grant. And he said, I just wanna go home. And just like that, Alfie disappeared. Then Bob rubbed the lamp next and Bob thought mm, that was pretty impressive and so the genie said what do you wish for master and he said well I'd like to be king of my country so just like that he was gone off to be king of his country. So now you've got Charlie sitting there thinking wow that's absolutely amazing Alfie's gone home Bob's now a king what shall I wish for? Um, thinking, you know, this is your whole life purpose, isn't it? What is it that you really wish if anything could happen? And he said, okay, I'm ready. And he rubbed the lamp and out came the genie. What is your wish master? And he went, I'm not really sure. So if you could just get Archie and Bob back and then we'll have a chat about it. <laughs> like that. Back comes Archie, back comes Bob, absolutely fuming. Because of course they're out of wishes now. So remember, dreaming is free, but you really need to know not only where you are, because they knew where they were on this island, but you need to know where you're going. Alfie had a plan, Bob had a plan, Charlie was a faffer. And, you know, it gets you absolutely nowhere. I mean, dreaming is free, but you've just got to think what matters most to you. And so that's your challenge, really, perhaps where to start is think about what matters most to you. And are your goals actually written down? Because if they're not, why not? So your challenge, once you've realised what matters most to you, is to write your goals down. Make sure they're smart goals. Make sure they're specific. You know exactly what it is that you want. Um, you know, what income do you want? Make sure it's measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Um, I think in the past, I've had dreams like, oh, I'd like to be there on, on, on the marketing plan. I'd like to earn a bit more than I earn now. Oh, I'd like a new car. They're all very vague, aren't they? You know, how much would I like to be earning a month? month what car do I want what sort of things do I really want and have I really got specifics because if you haven't you can't plan so another really good task to do if you haven't ever done it before is have a little think about how your business would look like in May 2027 so pick five years in the future and spend a bit of time Time, get your diary, get your journal out, get something out and write down a day in my life in May 2027. And just write down, you know, it's May the 18th, 2027. And what are you doing? Are you sitting in your garden looking over your beautiful views? Um, what, what is it that your day looks like in five years from now? Because that is your vision. You know, are you still doing what you're still doing now? Or have you now achieved some of the things that you want and you're moving on? And read that regularly. I did this last year um, and I keep that in the front of my journal. And so I have it sort of pinned to the front of my journal. And every now and again, I read it. So probably about once or twice a month, I will get that out and read it just to remind myself of what I want my day to look like. I mean, mine's April, 2026, but I need to know what that is. 
and where I want to be in five years and what my day actually looks like, because that personalizes it to you and it makes it real. So I then set annual goals and I turn those into vision boards and I'll show you a few examples in a minute. But once I've got an annual goal, I break that down then into a quarterly goal and into a monthly goal. And then that becomes my seven day action plan. So, for example, just thinking about my forever business, because that's what I've been thinking about at the Global Rally last week. I decided that to get onto my next level on the marketing plan, I need five new team members. Now, it's important that when you're doing this planning, you know your figures, you know your stats it is really important. I know that to get five people, I need to talk to 750 people. Now, you might think that's a lot of people, but it is. But I know the stats. I know that if I talk to 750 people, one in 10 of those roughly are going to ask for more information. So they're going to want to watch a video or they're going to want to meet for coffee. And so that takes me down to 75 people I can really home in on and chat to. I know the stats that out of those 75, I can probably get 15 to come along and take a look at the business seriously and look at a business presentation, tell them how it's run and what their income opportunities are. I know out of those 15 that actually sit in that business presentation, five of them will join my team. So then it's just a matter of thinking, right, I know what my goal is. I need five members. I need to talk to 750. How am I going to do it? Well, this is where my goals come in. If I want to do it, say, by the end of June, I got six weeks. So that means I need to talk to 125 people a week, which is 20 to 21 people a day. So that's one option. My other option is, say I want to do it by the end of September, so it's more of a quarterly goal. That gives me 19 weeks. So to talk to 750 people, I need to speak to 40 a week, which is about six to seven people a day. So I've just got to decide how quick do I want to get to this goal? How much time have I got to get to this goal? Because it's no good saying, oh, I'm going to do it by the end of June I'm going to talk to 20 people a day if by Tuesday I thought oh I only spoke to five yesterday because that starts to accumulate you think I've got to talk to 26 today and then you think I spoke to 10 so I've got to speak to 40 now on Wednesday if it's not doable it's not doable so be realistic about what you can achieve if you can manage six to seven a day that's fine but you need to have a plan now, the first thing I do when I think about a goal is I try to visualize it because I'm quite visual. So I like to have my goals up on my wall. Now, the one on the top left and the one on the middle are up on my notice board and they sit at home right next to my desk. Um, these are quite old ones um, because my new ones are still at home and I meant to bring them with me and I didn't take pictures so anyway but this is the, the the one in the middle is one I did in 2019 now some of these things I have achieved um I have retired I do have the little yellow case it's over in the other side of the room with uh, my clobber in it um, I have paid off all my credit cards I have started losing weight uh, at the top right there, it's got a picture of a house. I have decorated my house thanks to COVID from top to bottom. Haven't been going anywhere, so I might as well stay home and redecorate. My car hasn't changed simply because my car has spent most of the last two years on the drive and hasn't actually gained a lot of mileage. But those are visual things that I can look at and tick off as I go. The one on the top left is more about perhaps some you know, good words that I can live by, because I think that's important as well. And then the bottom left, for me, this is my life map. This is about me being the best version of me, because I think as well as having business goals, you need to think about how you're gonna develop yourself because you are your business. Um, so it's about thinking in those different areas about my best version is happy, confident, um, at my ideal weight, grateful, friendly, and financially secure. And that sits in the front of my day book, which is in the car. 
but I look at it every morning. The one on the right is one of my annual maps. So this is the one I did. Um, I always do it on my birthday. So this is the one that has just run out last month. And so in the middle, you've got what your destination is, is to be happy. And then all around it, you've got the things that will help you to be happy. So perhaps being a best-selling author, I have got a book with four publishers at the moment, so I'll wait and see. Ideal weight, again, I've lost 11 pounds recently, so I'm on my way there. Um, I am a successful business owner. My financial security is getting better, which has brought peace of mind. I feel more fulfilled because I'm retired and my business has been set up. And then down on the right hand side, what are these things that are going to build this? Well, um, I have new forever team members, which I do. I've set up my well-being business, which I have. Um, I'm writing my five a day book. That's been done. Um, on the left, then, who's going to help me? Well, myself, my mentors, people like yourselves, people that I can look up to and learn from and my team. So it's good to have it visual as well as having the words. But you need to put this into action. And this is where you need to have a routine. Um, and this is where you need to focus and not faff. So when I book in my various things, and you'll see my daily uh, diary in a minute, that's got to be focus time. Turn off all your distractions. I have in the past thought, do you know what? I can, I can pick up my notebook. I'll have a little write to my strategy and what I'm going to do, but I'll do it while I'm watching Bridgerton. Now, I don't know about you, but it's very distracting. I can't concentrate on my vision and it usually gets put down. And I think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. So turn off all distractions. Turn your phone off unless you're using your phone for that particular power hour. Make a deal with your family that you are not to be disturbed at that time or in that place. So find somewhere you're going to go and tell your family um, and book those power hours into your diary. So you need a day book or a planner or a to do list. And I always prioritize them. I color code them. Like I say, even when I carry things around in my handbag, I've always got highlighters um, so I can prioritize things. And make sure you're planning breaks for working on your mindset and just breathing and working on you. And it, you've got to have this routine. You've got to be organized because you run your day, remember, or your day will run you. And when your day runs you, you don't achieve. So on the right hand side here, you've got my this is my seven day plan that I do every Sunday night. So on that prospecting list there, I will write my six to seven people I'm going to talk to every day in order to achieve my goal by the end of September. Any retail activity I need to do is in that box as well. Those may be talking to customers, doing events. Any follow up calls that I've agreed to, to revisit will be written down in there. Any training or events or any reading I need to do is also put on there. And then what I do on the left, this is my diary and I color code blocks of time out. So you can see I've got little green boxes with FLP calls. These are when I'm going to call these people. Um, I've got essay marking in for my OU job. Those are all sort of in blues and purples. I've got yellow in which is me time. So these are times when I will just go out perhaps for a walk or do something for me. Um, pink stuff is family time, orange stuff is church. It's important that you color code, well, it is for me, because I know exactly then that I got balanced to that week, but all of the things on my seven day plan will happen because they're all coordinated. And again, that's just another example of a week. And on the right hand side here, this is my day book. So the date is at the top. And then you've got all the people down the side that I'm talking to. I can tick them off. I've got on the right hand side, perhaps any social media things I need to do, any other things that I need to do, any meetings that I've got to book in and all of those things are in there. So I know when I get up on the morning exactly what I've got to do. I know what activities I've got to do. And then when it gets to my power hour, 
outcomes my day book because these are all the people I'm going to talk to. Um, and you need a strategy. I need to know, for example, if I'm going to increase my, say, my forever business as an example, and I want these five new team members, I need to know how many I need. So I've got five. What am I going to do every day? Who am I going to contact? Well, I'm going to, I've just downloaded and printed off my LinkedIn list, my Facebook list and all my contacts. And I will then start to go through them. So I know exactly who I'm going to contact. I know when it's going to be done because those are in the powerhouse that are in there. I know how much income will be generated from each of those team members joining. And so you need to know this. Otherwise, you're not going to turn that why into gold because that why will just remain a dream and it will never be achieved. And, you know, if you feel comfortable with life, I think you're not moving forward. I mean, some people may feel they've reached their destination and that's fine. There will hopefully come a time when you're comfortable. But generally, I think sometimes we're comfortable but are we comfortable? Or are we just cruising? Have we plateaued? Um, and think about what self-development is needed. Um, you know, why do we come to Aspire? Why do we come to Iron Women? Because we need to develop. And I love the fact that bad news is an inconvenience. It's not, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm going to talk to 750 people to get those five new team members. Those 745 are not going to push me to jump in the canal every night. They're just an inconvenience. They might have said no. Some of them might have said not yet. So we'll keep in touch. But we've got to view this bad news as an inconvenience and just move on. Um, I've spent far too much time in the past looking at bad news or people who said no to me as a complete end to my business and I've sat there I've had a pity party I've cried I've thrown things I've quit the business and I think right I'm never doing it again and then you've just got to grab hold of yourself give yourself a good talking to and move on but just thinking changing that that bad news is an inconvenience it is not the end of the world and I think you've got to constantly plan do and review so I plan every Sunday night um, and then I do the work in the week and then I review it on a Sunday night. And sometimes I've done really well and I've done all the things that I plan to do. Other weeks I haven't. And then I give myself a little kick up the pants and I refocus for the next week. Um, and just remember, dreams don't work unless you do. A dream will never become a reality. That dream will never turn into gold unless you do something about it. Um, and remember, we don't fail. We either win or we learn. So out to those 750 people, some of them will be wins. But from the others, I will learn perhaps why it's not for them. I can adapt my approach because um, it's about building relationships. And if you really want to be somebody, just be somebody. Um, why not? Because if your goals don't scare you, they aren't big enough. And I have this on a huge poster at the back of my office. Um, it is so big, it's nearly as big as me. It's on a very long thing, but it's important. And I need to be scared about my goals because you think, wow, that they're inspiring then. So I have put a little YouTube link on here. It's not um, one perhaps you want to watch because some people might not like spiders. But the reason I've put this link on here before we ask any questions or people's thoughts, um, I've set the slides to share. So if you want to sort of um, share that so that people can have that link, it's about David Attenborough and the Darwin spider. And if you've ever come across this link, but the Darwin spider is about the size of your thumbnail. It is tiny, but this Darwin spider creates the strongest webs in the world her webs are stronger than steel. And she starts as a tiny little spider and she just spouts out all these sort of strings and these, I don't know, the, the web lines, her silk. She just throws it out there, but she throws it out 25 meters. Now she is the size of your thumbnail 
and she is throwing her, you know, her lines out 25 meters in the hope that something will stick. Um, if anything gets in her way, like another spider comes along and thinks, oh, I'll use her web. She toddles along her little line. She cuts the line. He goes swinging and she comes back. She gathers in all those little bits of silk. She pops them on her head because she's going to eat those later and recycle them for her next lines. And she starts again and she just turns and she spouts out her anchor lines again until something sticks. And I think sometimes, you know, we need to be more like the Darwin spider. We may be small, but we can be totally powerful. You've just got to make sure that those anchor lines go out often enough, regularly. We know where those anchor lines are going because they will stick. And once they stick, we've got a solid little business then. So I think that's me done, really. So just would like your thoughts. And if you need me to come and help you plan, I'm happy to meet for a coffee and get you sorted. So shall we come off page here now and let's take some questions from everyone. Fantastic. Isn't that amazing planning? Doesn't that inspire uh, you? Break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down and then do it. Yeah. <laughs> And it's bite size then, isn't it? If I think, oh my God, I've got to make 750 calls to get five new team members, I just sit overwhelmed and I do absolutely sod all. But you break it down. I think, well, okay, if I want it by September, six to seven calls a day, I can do that. And it's not overwhelming then, is it? But 750, I would just sit and think, oh my God, I can't do that. Six to seven, I can do. I think it's just wonderful that you've already accepted that 745 of those people are not going to be your customers. And you've almost confronted it at the beginning, where too often yeah. we won't, we'll, we'll almost feel put down because yeah. 10 out of 10 people have taken up our own. Yeah, that does come with practice. And my view is some will, some will, some will, some won't. So what next? <laughs> And you put the phone down, you say, some will, some won't, so what, next. Wow. You put the phone again. It's taken me years to get to that mindset. <laughs> like I say, most of the time when I first started in business, I would think, oh my God, they said no. And I'd have a little cry and I'd walk around and I'd have a cup and I'd have a piece of cake, which is how I put so much weight on. And I think, that's it, I'm not doing anything more this week. But you've just got to toughen up, really. If your why is strong enough, you will make the changes, I think. But I also feel, I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks this, I also think then they weren't right for you. It wasn't going to be a good working relationship. Yeah. And part of those 750, when you talk to them, you think, oh, please don't you be the one that says, yes, yes. <laughs> I can't work with you. Yeah. I invited two people once to a business presentation and as the evening wore on, I'm thinking, oh dear, I hope you say no, because actually you are really annoying me and I couldn't work with you. And yeah. at the end, I tried to be jolly. Well, what do you think? And they went, well, we don't think it's for us. And secretly my heart was going, yes, yes. Yeah. I've been because there. it's a shifting process. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I mean, I, I really, really believe that there is a reason why people suddenly do or don't work with you or people connect. Yeah, there's no coincidences, I don't think. I think you attract the right people. And that's part of that sifting process. You know, out of those 750, I will have a good chat to 75 of them. And there probably will be 15 there that I would like to work with. So you sift and you sift till you get to the to the wheat really and you get rid of the chaff so karen i know because we were working on your sort of um building a quality network of people you can really make important connect connections with how does this equip you now knowing yvonne what are yvonne's approaches I think for me it's just about getting more focused so I, I have my list of things that I've got to do this week 
and I just need to sit down and actually do them. But it's also focusing on not just creating the product, but also selling it. I think that's my biggest problem is, and I need to sort of speak to my email list and weed it out. Mm. Um, but I also need to actually move over to a CRM so that I'm actually building customer relations and managing those relations in a way rather than just like sending out an email and, and hoping it sticks. So we found over to you, how do you make sure, or where, first of all, because you've got to find the 740 people, where are you finding them from? And how are you managing that whole relationship? Because 740 people is a lot of people to speak to. Where are they coming from and how are you managing that? And what do you do with them when you, when you realise they're not worth courting? When I re most of them come off, uh, most of the people are people I already know, so they're in my contact list in my phone, or they may be people I know generally from LinkedIn, so I know a little bit about them and what they're looking for. They, some of them come off Instagram or Facebook. Um, again, they're people that I probably know quite well. I regularly sift all my social media so that I can get rid of people that I've ne if I haven't interacted with people in a year, I think, well, there's no point, so they go. Um, and so you've just got to constantly be sifting, I think, and just having those general conversations. And when you have a general conversation about, you know, this is what I do, would it be of interest to you? Some people will say no, but you can always say, well, are you happy for me to keep in touch? But always ask for referrals because those people may not be right for you, but they may know somebody who is. So I will always say, I understand this is not for you, but do you know anybody who's looking for something like this? Quite often, you know, I've had team people join, not the people I've spoken to, but their referrals that I've had from those people. So again, always ask for referrals. And how are you having those conversations? So would they be via LinkedIn? And would it be via a message you're sending them on LinkedIn? Yeah, I usually start with a message and then I try to get them offline as soon as I can onto a phone call or a face to face or as we've done in COVID onto a Zoom call. So at least I can see the colours of their eyes. And uh, what is the well, it, it, it just feels massive to to know that you've got sort of 745, but you're only looking for five. How mm. do you keep that up? How do you keep that up daily? You know, how do you keep the courage up daily when you know when you're getting so many no's compared with a yes? I think because it's it's being connected to your why. And so because I look at those vision boards every morning, they're in the front and the back of my day book. My goal maps are on up on my wall. Before I even start my power hour, I'm looking at those, I read through them, I do proper mantra breathing start, so I'm focused, I read all of those, and so my why is just so exciting wow. that it gets me through. Fantastic. And what's your power hour all about? My power hour is when I'm making those calls. So I've read all, you know, I've looked at all my goals. I've looked at my goal maps. I've sorted out my breathing. I've got myself quite excited about my why. I've sorted out who I'm going to talk to. I have a profile sheet for everybody that I phone. So I have their name and where they are, how I know them, what may be their sort of um, hot button. You know, are they looking for an extra income? Are they looking for a better lifestyle? Are they look? Are they stressed? Do they need? Are they parents? Do they need a bit of parenting? So you've actually just got to profile people, I think, first, and then you know, tailor your message accordingly. Then, fantastic. Ah, uh, can I go out to the floor? What okay. questions are coming in off other people? Because this is just so, this is like this is gold dust in itself. I, I just want the profile sheet. I can make a database from that. That's my CRM job done. Yeah. <laughs> I can send. I can send the uh, profile sheet, and you can adapt it. Then can we turn it into a book? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> the spiral band version on Lulu and. Uh, yeah we can do that then and we can just keep it private and just make your own copies mm. it's so. perfect i mean 
And you can put on that profile sheet anything you want. I mean, I just have their contact details at the top, a little bit about them, perhaps, um, you know, I usually need to know roughly how old they are. Hmm. Don't have to know their date of birth, but you know, if they got family, if they got pets, um, what do they currently do? But what is their hot button? What are they looking to change? to see if it matches what I want to do. And then underneath, you've got half a page then where I just say, you know, this is somebody I contact say 1st of April. This is what we chatted about. So when I get that person back, because they might say, it's not for me now, but can you phone me in three months? So I have a one to 12 folder. They will go in to three months time with a date saying, okay, I need to talk to these people 1st of July. 1st of July, out comes the profile sheet. I know exactly what I spoke to them about on the 1st of April. Mm. So I can pick that conversation up. And they think, oh, she's got a good memory. She remembers that I got a dog and it wasn't very well. Or she remembers my children were doing their GCSEs. And you pick that up and they think, oh, she knows me. No, my memory is appalling, but I've got a profile sheet. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing, isn't it? So could you use that, Karen? It will do, definitely. I think it would be one of those things where um, you could turn it into some sort of database quite easily or turn it into CRM or find a CRM that you can tweak mm. and then create that customer profile within that so that you're capturing those sort of details. So you're personalising it so you actually know what they want to do, that they're like cats and dogs like cats and dogs i've got a cats and dogs journal a gratitude journal with cats in it or dogs in it if you prefer dogs so coming to you beth beamer how would you manage using this system because of course you've got a very personalized database yeah and our database is very very specific i've even got a field for one of their favorite biscuits so when people come to the office we've got the right biscuits (laughs) Um, yeah, it's the same thing. We know the names of the dogs, you know, the names of the children, we know what year of school they're in, so that you can ask the personalized relevant questions. So any email from me will start with something like, how did your son's GCSEs go? Or something that just shows you've paid attention to what yeah. they've been saying. And that level of detail really makes a difference when you're trying to build a relationship with somebody over a period of time. Yeah. And how do you store yes. that? What does your CRM system look like? It's pretty... I, it was built for us. I can't even say I had a, a clue how it was done, but it's got fields for everything. And it does go down to such detail. And you can ignore some things. You don't need everything for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's just a case if you pull out the things that you know are going to be useful later on and keep those things noted. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be really simple. I mean, I'm quite paper-based, to be honest. I've, that's taken a lot to get me to use a CRM <laughs> and not my little folder. Um, Because I was quite happy on paper, but somebody said you've got to join the 21st century. Um, (laughs) But it's going to be different for everybody, depending on your business. But mine's a lot like Yvonne's. It's about personal information that shows you paid attention to that person so that you can pick up those details again later. Fantastic. And coming to you, Lorna, because you're just starting off on this journey of pulling together, you know, the type of customers you're going to work with and how you're going to market to them and stay connected. So, Lorna, how would you, you know, pick up on what was said this evening and perhaps implement some of that for you? I've always enjoyed very, very long-term relationships with, with clients. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm nodding in agreement here. I do get to know um, the families who join us. And, and I think as well that you can't fake it. Yeah. If people can smell that, I think, you know, you have, we use this word authentic, don't we, a lot in, in discussion. And I think that's important um, because yes, you can gather facts, but you know, you have to be the you know genuinely connected to your clients um so that that's always important to me and but i think i think that translates whether for me whether i'm talking to an individual or whether i'm talking to a company how can i say it, it there is no difference the company will have its own values that i will recognize and its own journey whoever i'm working with really um so i don't know you know in in terms of marketing i mean i can't really sort of in terms of 
my marketing plan and Yvonne's methodology, I mean, I don't know what the connection is there, I'm sorry, but um, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm impressed by what you do every day on a day-to-day -day basis, Yvonne. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I, I thought I was a list maker and I do end every day with an action list. Um, so I'm ready for the next day and I do time manage, but, but my gosh, I mean, it's, it's, you've blown me away today. <laughs> Honest, honestly, yeah. you know, I actually have now an 8 a.m. gardening slot and I, <laughs> and I, I weed for 30 minutes in the morning. <laughs> that was gardening weed in case. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, but to have it there as such a visual aid, I mean, wow. So impressive. Oh. So mm. impressive. You've got to bear in mind, though, that although my diary is colour coded, some days stuff happens and, you, and you've got to be OK to think, well, it was in the diary, but it, you know, sometimes you just write that day off because stuff mm. happens and don't beat yourself up. It's, it's a guide. But you can't, you won't always do it, you know. There are, there is no such thing as a perfect week where I get to a Sunday night and think, oh whoopee, every day went as I planned because it doesn't. Life happens, doesn't it? But yeah, yeah. You've yeah. got to you've got to you've got to celebrate celebrate your wins. And I always remember Yvonne you saying about standing at the bathroom mirror brushing your teeth at night, thinking, what have I achieved today? And how powerful that is as well, because it's easy to reflect on the things you didn't get done or you should have got done. And, and not actually pat yourself on the back for getting through the day and uh, because you'll have done something. So I'd love to capture everyone's sort of light bulbs of learning from this evening and how you're going to put it into action because um, Yvonne has come up with so many ideas there. I've got a notebook sort of full of pages, full of stuff. I thought that story about, you know, the three men in a boat was hysterical, absolutely hysterical. Um, and I've learned lots this evening and uh, I want to get some pens and I want to get going. So uh, I've learned so much and I almost just, I, I just want to get going. I just want to map out that week and colour code everything to know that I've got this balanced week. So I love that. And I'm going to put into action straight away. So coming to you, Steffi, what have you got out of this evening and what are you going to put into action? I, I well, don't know where to start. I really need to make a change. I've been looking for the last few weeks into CRM systems because I knew that I'm not doing it right, my whole organisation. Yeah. Um, but now I think I'd rather meet Yvonne for a coffee because even though I've looked at, into CRMs, I think A, I can probably do it myself without spending the money onto a CRM. I just need this nudge that I just had from Yvonne. All I did was like in my head, nod, 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 because everything she says makes sense. So yes, Yvonne, I would love to take you up on the offer to have a coffee and look at my organization. I should know I'm German. I should be dead organized in everything. <laughs> but, you know, poor Yvonne, fair dues. Christ. Fair <laughs> dues. <laughs> Is that German? No. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Thank you, Steffi. Over to you, Karen. So what have you learned? What are you going to put into action? God, what haven't I learned? I mean, um, I, 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 don't, I don't know my arse from my elbow, basically. You know, I really do need to go and personalise what I do and get to know people at a deeper level. I'm so much of an introvert, so you can sort of project an awful lot, but when I meet people, I'm just sort of, yeah, and stick me in a room with a group of people, you'll find me sort of at the door, or, you know, away from people. It's, people are scary, you know, so Zoom is great, but people in real life. Um, I, I do need to do, sort out a CRM and actually just focus on the one person, one person at a time, and um, get some sort of CRM stuff done. I mean, I can do access databases. So I could actually create something myself, but it would be useful to see what else is created and um, stop reinventing the wheel. But uh, yeah, if I can sort of get some details done and actually start paying attention 
to people and and just sort of get out of my comfort zone a little bit and get to know them on a more personal level so yeah more work <laughs> <laughs> thank you Karen over to you Beth what have you learned from this evening what could you put into action um, I already have color-coded system for my diary at the start of the week the thing I've had to adapt to is like as everyone says things don't always go to plan and because I'm such an organized person the thing I struggle with is when all of a sudden that doesn't happen and you've got to adjust so today I was on literally getting in the car to go and see a new client when my PA called and said I just ran to confirm the appointment they've double booked themselves again um don't go so all of a sudden I was okay I had three hours set aside for the appointment and then three hours of follow-up time. All of a sudden, I've got a day where my diary's gone completely. So it did take me 30 minutes to sort of sit down and rearrange and look at, right, what from next week can we bring forward to free up time next week? And it does take a little bit of, it takes a bit of getting used to to be able to be that adaptable. I'm getting better at it. I used to just freak out and go, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing today. Um, it is, I think that's a skill in itself. It's one thing to get the organization, but then being able to sort of think on the fly and change things as well. That's what I've struggled with. I'm getting better, but I still do find there's a sort of a momentary panic of, oh, the plan's not going right. Lovely. Thank you, Beth. Thanks for sharing. Coming to you, Lorna, what have you learned? What can you put into action from this evening? And it could be just confirming what you already know or bringing up something from the past. I tell you what I quite like, and I have done it, is this um, mood board of where you're going and starting there and pairing back from it. So developing the numbers, and I think I know my numbers pretty well now, but I've never really kind of got to, how can I say, I know my numbers on a day to day and per annum, but I've never really reached forward quite so far. So, you know, what I want to be in 10 years time and that's that's what's hit me that's something i'm going to take Lovely. really think of it like that great thank you lorna and coming to you rosie what have you picked up from this evening how will you put it into action well i just picked up how um how um flexible i am really i suppose in terms of and i'm not particularly um a lot of what yvonne said um i could relate to in terms of how you speak to people and how you go with the flow and the idea of a threat as an opportunity because like you I work with a lot of local authority well I work with a lot of local authorities and I've had those contracts you know for a long time I think Lorna said that as well uh, but I now know that I want to move away from that organizations those organizations because they want me too cheap, really. And there's something about, you know, getting getting to a place whereby this is my value. And uh, if you want me, you're going to pay me for it. So the idea of being able to see a threat as an opportunity. I do talk about reframe, Rosie. I'm very good at reframing things. And um, but the other question I had for Yvonne, because um, I'm not as organized as that clearly, but what, and people have said it tonight, so I'm going to be vulnerable and say, what is a CRM? Over to you. Uh, CRM is a customer relationship management software tool. All oh, right, okay, that's why I wouldn't know what it was then. Yeah. Because this is my one, this is my customer one. So, um, yeah, so, yeah. Mary, it's, you're it's, just, it's just computerizing what you yeah. said basically yeah but no it's good to know that I don't you know I don't have that language really but people are my world because that's that's my business working with people around what they need in terms of their own emotional issues and whatever else so um obviously there's there's stuff that needs to organise within that. But I think the main thing is, for me, is listening to Yvonne, is that she has a lot of, um, what would I say? I wanted to say courage, which I feel I have. And I think also there's a kind of a good sense of self in there. And uh, the mood boards are something that I would want to do as well. So thank you, Yvonne. 
coming to you then Sophia so tell us what Sophia got out of this evening and how will you put it into action thank you Yvonne that was so insightful um I've got a few things uh another um big reminder to go back to my 2019 vision boards uh with my big juicy goal for the 10 modular on and revisit that um, for sure. I loved your vision boards, Yvonne. Um, also to continue, um, which I've started doing since um, I've had your lovely journal, Cheryl, um, break down goals into um, smaller, smaller chunks, um, sm um, into steps rather than viewing them as a whole because um it's so much easier just to take one step isn't it than to think about reaching the top of the mountain because when you do you think how the hell am I going to do that but all you just got to do is just put one foot in front of another that's what that that's a massive reminder for me so yeah continue with the small chunks um your level of organization is incredible but it also scares the shit out of me <laughs> And I think that is because for me and the way that I work best, I need to keep free space in my diary because I feel that if I fill it too much, I don't allow the space for any, any authentic connections. And I'm very energetic in the way that I deal with life. So I believe if I fill in my diary to the brim, then the universe will decide that I'm way too busy for anything else and won't necessarily send me anything that is meant for me or anyone that is meant for me. And the best connections I've made have just been authentic, spur of the moment things. So either, um, either that or maybe something's rubbing up against me I don't know but I'm definitely going to um look into it a bit further but yeah vision boards um continue with smaller chunks um to reach the bigger bigger goal and just yeah just continue to be present um I think but thank you very much that was super insightful thank you, <laughs> thank you Sophia and uh, Miriam, coming to you, what have you got from this evening and how are you going to put it to work? Oh, thank you so much, Yvonne. That's been, it's, it's, it's been absolutely fantastic because I think partly because I'm so dyslexic, I've always had lots and lots of coloured pens and I colour code things and it just makes it easier for me visually, even if it is a bit of a mess, I can get that, I understand it. I also didn't understand what a COM is or a CIA is or whatever it was that you said, but I do. I was quite chuffed that I do have a database with, especially with people that have commissioned me for work and I have built up amazing relationships. I suddenly realized that I've got a person who has brought over eight of my paintings and we've got a really lovely close relationship and I love that idea of it what I don't understand is how do you get so many people to even sign up to you or chat to, or not even to talk to but just how do you get that vast number because that was just mind-blowing because you said you had like what did you, had, did you say you had 750 it will take me 750 people to talk to or to connect to get the five I can work with but how do you even get that big number at the beginning, not even to talk to all of them? I just download my LinkedIn list, my all my social media lists, and they, they come up in a nice big watch, and I literally just go through them and I contact them. And oh. there are hundreds and hundreds on there. So like your friends or your connections, do you friends, mean? Friends, connections, all of those, and you can just print them off. Um, you don't have to print them off. You can save them on your laptop. Yeah. Um, I've got them saved, but I do tend to print chunks off at a time so I can literally, because I like a bit of 
yeah. where the paper so in my hand. You can mark it off. Exactly. I can tick it off. And I can, again, colour code them into, you know, if they get a red line through it, I'm never contacting them again. Yes. If they've got a yellow line through it, I'm going to contact them again. And I usually have a date when I'm going to recontact them. And if they're green, they're moving on to the next stage. Mm. And when they join, they get a little pink star next to them. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, so do you do that with all the people that you kind of know or are connected with? That's what you, that's like your mail list. Yeah. Yeah. So many thank ideas there. Just yeah, so many. many ideas. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to put it all into practice, but thank you. That's amazing. And uh, I loved your saying where you said, some will, some won't, some, so what? So some mm -hmm. will, some won't, so what? And I just love that. I think it's a wonderful next, mantra, next. especially when you're making the call. Yeah. 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 Some so, will, some won't, so what? Next. That makes me feel so much better about my cancel shoot today, honestly, because this morning I was like, oh, God, you know, because I was on such a high when she cancelled, it was such a low. But as soon as you said she wasn't meant to be. No, it's true. He was probably going to be a real pain in the butt for you. It was probably going to be a horrible shoot. So right. I'd take a screen she didn't deserve you. Yeah, but. But look what happened since. I've had a headshot session, session today with a connection from a network. And uh, she paid previously for her headshot session. But because we had such a nice time, um, it took a bit longer, which I don't mind. Ian just walked in because he's working on their house and handed me a card, that card literally just now. There's money in it. So again, the session fee that she already paid and she says, I realized that you gave us so much more of your precious time and attention. We ended up having double thanks. Please accept this gift. I'm wow. like, what? You know, Meant to unbelievable. Be. So the one this morning can just keep walking yeah. and this person just needs to stay in my life. You know? Amazing. Amazing. Um, I'd like us to put our hands together for Yvonne for all that precious time she put in. Yvonne, can you speak and do something with a, a, um, a diary or a, or a planner so I can take a photograph of, of the screen? Oh, God. Yvonne, have you got what you've gone, gone? Do something a bit, you know, so we're, we're not like... I've just literally packed it in the car. <laughs> the only thing I've got is my notebook. Okay, so let's hold up a notebook or something so I can take a shot of everyone. So it's all planned. So I hope, I hope, right here. Okay. Let's look exciting. Uh, one, two, three. Fab, there we are. So can we put our hands together for Yvonne? That was absolutely, it was gold dust. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you so Thank you. much. And and I'm and I've got loads of people saying, you know, can we get the recording? So We'll put that up in the academy as well. And if you want the slides as well, I'm happy for those to, to go out. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Next week as well, we're online Wednesday night, six o'clock. And we have Beth Price doing a masterclass for us on Instagram. For those people who are really okay. struggling with Instagram, I'm one of those. Yeah. I've only ever in the whole history of my Instagram account put out six posts and I've got nearly a hundred followers. I don't talk to them. I'm sort of like an Instagram idiot. So I really need Beth's help. So mm. for those of you as well, who are really wanting to get into Instagram, I'd like to know more about it and how she does this amazing interaction. Cause she says she gets a lot of business through her Instagram account. So we're gonna learn lots next week about Instagram. Stay safe, everyone, stay connected and look forward to seeing you next Wednesday evening. Good night, bye-bye. Hello, bye. -bye. bye. 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 bye.